Hello YouTubers and welcome to another episode of the vlogs. Today Yam and I had a little nap and I'm trying to figure out his food situation. That's why the bowl is on the floor. I've got a little stand for the bowl. A little bit of a change of subject today. Um, I've got the stand for his bowl and he just wasn't finishing his meals. Or at least he would sort of eat a little bit and then come back to it, eat a little bit. But I think I figured it out. He, the bowl was a bit too high so he would eat what he could reach and then his collar would ding against the bowl when he would go to the back of the bowl to eat the food and then he would scare himself with his collar and then not eat until he forgot that he was scared and then go back to it. So I'm moving the bowl around and trying to figure out the heights for him but obviously as he grows up as well we'll have to keep adjusting it as well. But that's it for today's interesting yam information and progress on how I am learning about raising a puppy and how yam is learning about trying not to be scared about his collar hitting a ball. But now we're going to head to the club and get a little bit of a... We're going to fuel up first and then we're going to head on to the erg for some nice steady heart rate training and I'm going to sort of discuss today about my heart rate zones personally rather than sort of the last few videos have been try this maybe they hear some advice I'm just going to talk about what my heart rate is like during an erg or or during some ergs and then see if you find any parallels with your training or um, just if you might find it interesting and then let me know in the comments below if you would like any more sort of personal stuff regarding training that might work for me and then you might be interested and then I'll see if I can share it and see if I can help you guys out. But now, like I said, it's time to fuel up at the club for lunch. So let's get safely driving in the Yaris to the club. So see you there. Yam. Oh. One thing I have noticed with Yam is, so when he was, when I picked him up about a week ago now, as he lies down, he could not, he was nowhere near seeing over the window ledge. He's covered in grass. Yeah. He could nowhere near, he was maybe here when he was sitting, and now he's about here, and he can almost see out the window and get sort of the breeze out the window. So he is growing so fast, his legs have definitely got bigger. I've been noticing that, but he is definitely a bigger puppy. Hopefully, over time, or over the amount of footage I'm taking just with the daily vlog anyway I will have some footage and make some sort of cool montage as he grows up into a fully grown Great Dane puppy but we'll see about that when we get there but he is definitely growing fast so let's now get to the club Good boy. And we've made it to the club after what felt like an hour in the car getting to here because of this big crane behind me. We've had to put some traffic lights just cutting trees down around the Leander car park. But Yam and I have finally made it. We're going to grab some food to fuel up pre-session and then we're going to get on the erg. So let's get to some fueling, finally. He's still like yeah, lying, buddy. <laughs> and we've made it outside on the balcony to fuel up today pre-session while Yam's eating a fence. Oh yeah. And we've made it back to the house after the workout after a little bit of fueling up but I was in a big rush this afternoon to get back or to get away from the club after the session for a couple of business meetings about future stuff not really relating to the vlogs but tonight we have fajita house night we've got big Callum McBride coming over we've got Tim Clark the nutritionist and Becky as well I think that is it for our house gathering. Anyway, I was talking about, or going to talk about heart rates and my heart rates in particular. So as you saw in the scores of my erg just there, my 
average heart rate there was 138 as it starts to rain. So my average heart rate was 138 and that is roughly my UT2 heart rate. So that's what I kind of tried to look at when I'm doing the ergos, especially now, just trying to keep my heart rate under 140 as an average. I'll probably let it go above there, especially towards the end of the erg, as it's, if it's longer. So if it's a bit longer, um, you start to get a bit dehydrated, you get a bit of cardiac drift. But I'm not looking at 150, 160. I'm looking at sort of maybe 145, 146 at a push. And then also when I am looking at my heart rate mo uh, on the erg, on the screen, I'm looking and feeling my breathing to see if that can adjust the heart rate itself. So sometimes I have a tendency to breathe through my nose and that lets less oxygen in for me, etc. And so my heart rate goes up and maybe not so much less oxygen, in, but more restricted breathing as I still am working on my breathing techniques. But when I breathe the way it currently through my nose, it doesn't expel and inhale enough. So then when I breathe through my mouth, especially on the exhale, my heart rate actually does drop. And it is noticeable when you're looking at the heart rate every single stroke, you could be sitting at say 142 and then, okay, focus back to the breathing, breathe out, okay, breathe in, etc. big deep breaths. And it can end up going down to sort of 135s. So it can make a big difference. But that's sort of my UT2 heart rate as Yam is out here. I'm not sure if you can see him out there. But resting heart rate, uh, I think the lowest I've ever seen is 35 for me. And that is that is a low heart rate. And that's why my, I think that's why my UT2 heart rate is a bit lower um, than some people's because my resting heart rate is a bit lower. So the gap between my resting and my UT2 is probably similar to most people's, but the numbers are shift down. Why those numbers are so big? Well, generally, a bigger person will literally have a bigger heart, so it'll take less, or it'll be bigger, so it'll pump more blood in one pump, one contraction. So therefore, it should be less, but therefore, but it's also pushing blood through a bigger area or longer distance, so it may less but also doing more exercise can drop your resting heart rate down by making your heart stronger and pumping more blood per contraction so there's that but my heart rate is reasonably low for even an athlete and um, so around so right now it's probably high 30s um, but I have seen it sort of mid 30s and I know people have it lower and people have it higher it's just whatever works or whatever yours is is what that's your sort of part of your identity and then sort of my max heart rate kind of stuff, um, if I'm doing say a half hour, rate 20 flat out, um, I'm looking at hitting sort of 195 um, towards sort of last few minutes. Um, I'm not really going above that. Uh, I haven't actually worn my heart rate monitor during a 2K erg, because I feel sometimes you just get two in your head looking at what big pressure situations so you let it go and if it's at 290 you're not worried because you don't know it's at 290 but obviously that's an exaggeration but that is kind of the three numbers i look at my lowest my resting heart rate so the middle of the ut2 and then the highest range and then you can kind of work out where you're supposed to be in between so my ut1 um i kind of around 150 155 and then above that up to other ranges is higher and then my max is around 200. I know if I'm at 200, there's something big's going on. And then obviously, if I'm doing something really light under UT2, I know my heart rate is there and it can be sort of lower than that for really light. But I use my heart rate specifically not to say, okay, today I'm doing UT2, my heart rate must average 137. No, it's more of a guide for myself. So some days I might feel really, really good, but my heart rate is really, really high. So you'd think that they don't really work together, but then you could use your heart rate to say, okay, maybe the body isn't quite recovered from what you might have been doing, so that's why it's sitting a bit higher. And so maybe you could tailor taper back a little bit as well as feeling really good to continue the feeling of feeling really good and continue being consistent, which I spoke about before. Consistency is a huge thing, especially in rowing. And also your heart rate 
sort of for UT2 or whatever it is, isn't always, it's quite affected by external factors, whether that is uh, heat, heat is massive, uh, hydration, or even just sort of stress coming in, that can all raise and lower those heart rates. So you have to kind of understand that some days that for me, 138 might not be attainable, but other days, 138 is definitely attainable. So you kind of have to have a gauge, a little bit of a rate, not, I'm not saying 120 to 150 is my UT2. I'm saying if it's at sort of 144, 145 for me, I'll be like, okay, how do I feel? Is that too high? And that's what you kind of have to combine a couple of things with like level of perceived exertion. So are you feeling like you're working hard and does your heart rate match that? And if it doesn't match that, you kind of have to analyze and see why or maybe sort of change the workout slightly intensity wise up or down to see if you can get the best workout for you. And I spoke about sort of heart rate training zones and the benefits of those and keeping sort of regimented in those zones to make sure that you're training properly and you get the, the maximum benefit from all of the training program, not just parts of it. But that's a whole nother sort of thing. But let me know in the comments below if you thought that was kind of interesting, more sort of a personal approach to the heart rate rather than me talking about the benefits of heart rate training. And of course, there's plenty of different subjects I can kind of talk about from a personal standpoint rather than offering some advice. Because usually what I tend to do, for example, yesterday we spoke about sort of taking a break. Is it bad or is it good? Rather than sort of using, okay, I've taken a break at this time and this helped me. I didn't take a break at this time and this didn't help me, etc. So let me know in the comments below if you think that would be better or kind of continuing or maybe a, a combination of the two. And that will be the end of today's video. Looking forward to some fajitas with the house. And as always, Yam Squad, remember. And lastly, if you've made it this far, thank you very much. And you might have noticed that uh, today was a Henley Rorgata Day 1 video has went back up. So we kind of figured out the issues that we were having with them getting taken down and then came to a compromise of them putting up. Basically, essentially, there was um, an issue with the logo on the screen when Henley Rorgata footage was there. And I thought I had permission and I didn't have permission from some people, but I did from others. So now the videos are going back up because I feel like they're some of my best vlogs I've done to date, I would say. So I want to have them on the channel. So for people who want to watch them, I know a lot of you guys have already seen them, but for people who might want to watch them, that's kind of, I feel like the, the day one to day five really sort of encompasses my whole channel and how I'm approaching what I'm doing. So very positive, um, kind of just a bit different and very behind the scenes and it is literally showing what really goes on. But as always, Jam Squad, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button. I really appreciate all of the support from all of you guys. It is absolutely phenomenal. And let's see if we can really push to, well, obviously the road to 100K has started, but we're, we're, get, we're going well to 20K. So let's try and get it there and see you tomorrow.